I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move to uh, opening comments by Superintendent Ms. strauss -Claire. Thank you, Mr. Latchley. Good evening, everyone. Last month, graduation ceremonies were held for our 2,200 graduating seniors. This year's ceremony marked the first year that Southside High's band was able to perform for this special occasion. And overall, our graduating class, LPSS seniors, earned an estimate, estimated $42 million in scholarship money. In addition to our seniors, successes this year with they had campus celebrations of their own um, they were recognized for attendance reading academic academic and behavioral successes we hope our students enjoy this summer and um, begin the next chapter of their lives successfully on may 19th four lafayette high school students from the educators rising club were recognized during a signing event to celebrate their enrollment at ul for the fall of 2022 these four students, Faith Abair, Elizabeth Meyer, John Paul, and Madeline Jordan, were dedicated members of the Educator Rising Club at Lafayette High School who committed to becoming future teachers. We wish these students well as they enter the next chapter of their lives and await the day that we can welcome these four students back to our district as new teachers. We are pleased to announce that the district has been awarded the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting by the Association of School Business Officials International and for our annual Comprehensive Financial Report for Fiscal Year 2021. This is our 29th year receiving the award and is a testament to our Business Services Department's commitment to high standards and transparency in financial reporting. Recently, we announced our partnership with the Lafayette Parish Sheriff's Office for enhanced monitoring services through LPSO's Real-Time Crime Center. This new endeavor serves as an additional tool to assist us in response to an emergency situation and complements procedures and protocols already in place. Over the last few years, the board and the district have made school safety a priority through various collaborations with local law enforcement agencies and our SRO programs. Our staff participates in ongoing crisis management training, including active shooter drills, and our school leaders, as they do annually, are currently working on updating crisis response plans. We remain committed to doing our part to make our campuses safe and secure learning environments. Thank you, Mr. Latchley. This concludes my comments. Thank you, Ms. strauss -Claire. If I may, I'd like to uh, yield the floor to Mr. Justin Santani. Thank you, Mr. Latchley. Uh, Ms. strauss -Claire, is the uh, do we have a presentation for our meeting next month? For July. Yes, for sir. July. For our July 13th meeting. And, and it'll be the sheriff. The sheriff, sheriff Garber will be so here. I, yes. I just wanted to point that out that um, as I'm sure you all have gotten questions from parents, concerned parents after the tragedy in Texas, that the sheriff will be here to present and, and describe in the detail that he can uh, what, our, what our security posture looks like and what we're doing to keep our children and our schools safe. Um, as Ms. Troskoy mentioned, it's an ongoing responsibility and something that we, we take very seriously every day. So I'll be excited to, to hear from him. Uh, otherwise, I want to ask Mr. Burnell Lemoyne to come up and uh, come to the podium and give us a little bit of a, uh, an update on the art expo that happened last month or April. I've never talked from this side, so I'm not too sure what to do. Uh, I just wanted to come by and uh, thank the board uh, for the continued, continued support of the Art Expo that, that's been in existence for almost 20 years now. Uh, the, this year, uh, Bree, the, the Pace artists, the Page and Bree, and, the, and, the, and staff of the ACA, and uh, Pace artists, the uh, choir teachers, the band teachers, the art teachers, and I, ho I hope I covered everybody, because everybody has done the most phenomenal job that I've ever seen for an art expo. 
it was it was just absolutely amazing the quality of work that was shown there for on that day could have been in any art gallery that you go to and <laughs> selling them and some of them did sell some of their their goods uh, at the uh, at, at the fair but uh, th this year we had close to well there were over 6,000 people that came and were ready but then there were probably more than that uh, than, uh, than the 6,000 that they were able to count. Numerous businesses uh, took part in it. You could walk around. But just some of the comments from the students. One, one child said that he was there and he was so excited to, do, to perform because he had come 10 years prior to that and thought, one day I'm going to do that. So just the, 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 the feeling about the whole thing. But it was just phenomenal. And uh, it's gone on and on. And the original thought was that you have incredible things going on in the school, but who sees it? So that's what this is for, for, for people to go, go to the, the places and see what, the, what our students are doing. And you all have been very supportive of it, and the superintendent has. And I certainly do appreciate uh, the support and look forward to many, many more art expos. And thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, sir. Mr. Centen Mr. Centani, and if I may, Mr. Burnell, certainly we'd like to invite you back for our July meeting. I think you would be very excited about the presentation that we'll have on our arts experience that all of our K-5, pre-K through 5, fifth grade students next year will take part in. Dr. Rabelais and Paget Guidry, along with Bree and Sam and ACA, they've just done a tremendous job, and I think it's going to be real exciting for our students next year. I, uh, I've, I've seen it. I've I'm on, uh, on the education committee with Bree, and she showed it to us, and I was just talking to Mr. Rabelais before the meeting. Uh, <laughs> once you ex tell the, the general public what's going to be done, it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the experience that these students will have, and the number of students, that are, and for that many years, it's going to be unbelievable. I, it, when I, I, when she, he, uh, uh, Sam presented it to the, the ACA board, and everybody on the board said, I can't believe you're going to be able to do this. And, and then Bree talked about it. And it's just, I, I congratulate you for, for uh, proving it and getting it on, on the way. And, and Bree has, has it down to a science. So it's, uh, I definitely will be there at the meeting because I think it, it's going to be one of the most phenomenal programs anywhere. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And if, and if I may, Ms. Landry. Can you believe all the times you told me to be quiet in your class, I have control of the microphone tonight? Huh? <laughs> you never know what happens in life. Good seeing you. We'll move on to the information items. 2.1 Employee Services Personnel Changes. Mr. Mouton? Ms. Gardner? None this evening? Okay. 2.2 is Facilities, the Monthly Facilities Update. Mr. Bordelon? Uh, good evening, members of the board. Kyle Bordlawn, Director of Planning and Facilities. In your packet is the monthly construction update. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those at this time. Mr. Centani. Mr. Bordelon, how confident are we in the December 2022 uh, completion date of the Woodvale Cafeteria? I'm pretty I mean, confident. you put it on paper. I assume you're confident, but, like, you know, do, do we have, like, are there still rain days built into the schedule? Or are we, you know, kind of taking up all the slack that we... Well, the rain days that are in this, the rain days are in the schedule. If the number of rain days they actually experience exceed what's in the schedule, then they're entitled to the excess, the way we have it in the contract. But the contractor is not making any kind of indication that he's not going to hit that date. So at this time, we're we're confident that it'll hit that date. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Bordelone, the uh, small projects and, and capital improvements, the things coming up for this next fiscal year. When can we anticipate getting the list to uh, assign these projects? Um, I'm going to have to drop back and look at the policy that the board approved and uh, go back through that. To We're going to have to do some advertising uh, to get that out for advertising, and then we're going to follow that process that the board had approved. I don't remember ex exactly how it goes okay. off the top of my head, but I know we had gone through a lot of effort to go to come up with a policy and a procedure to follow right. for selection so we're going to get started on that 
Yeah, because I know last year, I mean, a, a list was generated and, and given to each board member of the, the projects within their district and the, uh, the approved architects, engineers, and so forth and so on. And I would, I would imagine we're going to do it the same way this year. Uh, I'll, I'll pull that and discuss that with Ms. Trosclair. That is the way we did it last year, correct? Well, that's the way we did it last year, but it, that was in order to get projects started. Uh, there was You gave Ms. Trosclair the ability to make some selections. Right. Uh, but that this year we would follow that procedure that was approved by the board is my understanding. Well, we might want to discuss that again because I like, I like the way of, of, of being actively involved as the board member of the district of working with it because I, I know we're not going back to the fishbowl. I know that's not going to happen. No, or sir. Just, and just so we'll pull what exactly the language was and okay. bring back to you all, and okay. um, we'll, we'll go from there. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Centani. Mr. Bordon, has the uh, parent drop off at Bruce Hart Mental project started? The, I know the contractor has mobilized uh, something out there. We did have a pre-construction meeting out there uh, a couple of weeks ago. I have not been able to get out there myself lately in the last couple of weeks to see what they've done. But uh, we have issued a notice to proceed on the project. Okay. Mr. Broussard. Mr. Borden, I certainly appreciate the project with the walkway cover at J. Wallace James. But I was searching to see if we are starting to work for the rest, uh, restrooms that we're installing. I would have liked to see them, both of them, constructed together so with school open in August would be complete. How far are we? on that project we have a mover lined up to move the building uh, from LJ Alamont to J Wallace James that that restroom building um, someone else in my department is managing that right now but uh, and he's out on COVID leave but I know it's it's scheduled to be moved in the next week or so uh, and then we're gonna as soon as he gets it over there we'll get it set up connected we have to get power, water, sewer connected to it, fire alarm system, and the uh, I think the board just approved the walkway cover project last month's meeting. Mm -hmm. So the contracts have been issued. Um, we um, we have a I believe we have a pre-construction meeting scheduled in the next week or two on that. So that project is moving forward. You think it's possible both of them be completed before school starts? I know the restroom building will be in place. Uh, I, until we meet, until I get a schedule from the contractor to find out when the delivery of the materials and the installation can happen, um, I, I can't can't speak to whether it's going to be completed before school begins. Well, one other thing, we made several phone calls on the the property for the new Truman site, and the gentleman was supposed to start removing the goods from there. And I know we're supposed to start breaking grounds in the next few days, and that's probably going to be in the way. How much authority do we have if tomorrow is going to start the construction and material is still on site? How much authority do we have to move it ourselves? Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure the answer to that question. Um, I mean, we can we can always get the contractor to move it to a location on the site out of out of his way uh, to be dealt with at a, at a at a future spot future date but it would cost the school board or call a new contract probably won't do it at, at his cost it would probably be an added expense to us uh, but my question is if I would if I would no it won't cost us a dime if if, just got if, confirmation. if, if I were to to, do I have the, do we have the, or do I have the authority to remove it, remove it completely? Does it become ours or it still belongs to whoever did the work? Does it become ours at this point? I'll have to find out. I don't know the answer to that could question. You, could, could you please, I think the wording that I've got from uh, someone that we're supposed to start shoveling uh, sometime next week and it's, it's, it's in the way. So if you can, and I spoke to the gentleman who's supposed to start removing it since last week, and he assured me by Monday of this week it would be gone, but it's still there. So don't want to, 
uh, get anyone angry, uh, you know, and make another phone call and let them know this is uh, this is the 11th hour and it has to be done. And hopefully they make the, a positive decision, but we've got to make one as well. So that's why I'm asking if we, what can we do in an order to be, not to make anyone angry and stay within the, extend the laws. I'll have to find out. I'll Thank you. Yes, sir. Kyle, what about Doosan? Where are we? I know we were out for bid. So what's the next step? Walkway covers? Yes. Walkway That's in covers. the same package as the J. Wallace James, uh, S.J. Montgomery, and Judy Smittle. Okay. So uh, we should be having a, uh, a it, it should be getting started pretty soon as far as a, a notice to proceed goes, but I have to wait until I receive a construction schedule and a delivery schedule on the materials from the contractor to be able to tell you when you can see things going going up. There's any possibility before school starts, or you don't I, think I that's don't want to make any promises that I have no control over. I, anything's possible, but until I see the delivery schedule of materials, I, I really would rather not make any indication one way or the other. And materials are coming in really slow, or just it, it's not, it depends. It just uh, depends on what you're some ordering. some things are available in some near in a region of the of the, our country here uh, in our region and some things are not um and there's really no rhyme or reason of of what kind of materials so thank if, you if i can find out i i can let i can get the, the information transferred down okay thank you yes ma'am mr Boo. hello uh kyle first off i really like the way that you've uh, present the information to us um, the north side roof replacement project that we approved is that started or is that where are we on that process we have started per se we've signed a contract and uh, I've seen a lot of emails in the last couple of weeks of the architect is pushing the contractor real hard to come up with a delivery uh, there is a issue nationwide about the uh, delivery of insulation board that goes into that roof system and we're trying to get an answer from the contractor as to when he can get the insulation board um, and, and how long it's going to take. And we just haven't gotten that answer yet. I know there, I saw a shop, uh, email today about shop drawings that were submitted. The architect's been checking over that stuff. But again, waiting on a, on a delivery time for the insulation board. But we do have contracts to yes. get started. Um, and my other question was about Broussard Middle. Is that drop off and, and pick up going to be disrupted uh, we prepared for the alternatives because it looks like it's you're saying august 21st obviously school's going to start before then well then the new drop off is totally independent of the existing drop off in that field yeah right so um but that's a that narrow road i'm worried about you know accessing parents being able to and the buses and all that do we need to well, have some kind of the, plan? the best case scenario is that we finish the new drop off prior to school starting and we can separate the cars from the buses. One's on one end of the campus, one's on the other. Worst case scenario is if it's not quite finished, we will continue that in this coming year what we were doing last year. So, you know, it would be nothing that out, it, it would be nothing that people haven't already been doing. Um, so, you know, pending good weather, uh, we probably can get it finished before school starts. Uh, I know the one at Karen Crow Middle, we did a fi final walkthrough today and it went really quick. We had some good weather and uh, the work progressed really quickly. So I'm um, anticipating that as long as we have good weather this summer, uh, we should be able to get Broussard Middle done pretty quickly. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much. And we'll move on to item 2.4, new construction. Mr. Brew. Uh, good evening, uh, board president, uh, board superintendent, and community. My name is Joseph Brew, director of new construction. Um, the I information item they have before you is um, for the change orders which represent the early release packages that we're submitting for Prairie Elementary School. Um, I wanna thank the board for allowing us to pursue this route. It gives us an advantage, actually many advantages, 
and it doesn't have a negative impact to the overall cost of the project. Um, I've got um, Stuart, representative of J.B. Mouton, who could further elaborate, but I just want to thank the, the board for supporting this. It's very important. Um, the GMP we are also submitting today, uh, that's going to come up later. Um, just imagine on the Prairie Project, if we didn't have the early release packages re um, released it when they were, we would not have the advantage of being a under construction right now. So we would just be starting the project. So um, big advantage to that, even in regards to insurance, just, um, contractor and I were talking about this earlier today, that insurance premiums are much higher because of um, the season, and we're taking advantage of that too. Um, did I miss anything? No, that's it. Uh, we appreciate y'all letting us do these early release packages. It really pushes the project forward. Um, the amount of time, I guess, we if we started today, would have been would have been really tight to get the project finished on time. It bought us a lot of uh, time for no additional cost. And um, this final change order number five that's on the agenda today is to get us to the guaranteed maximum price amount and then the guaranteed maximum uh, amendment is on the agenda too later on so at that point we're fully under contract we're fully moving forward and um we're working towards getting everything finished for you for next summer thank you thank you we'll move along then to the consent agenda Item 3.1 will be discussion and or action concerning the superintendent's evaluation. Pull that, please. Thank you very much. We'll pull that and we'll discuss it after we go through the other, other items. Uh, item 3.2, child nutritional services discussion or action concerning bid award 22-2223 milk and milk and milk products. 3.3 nutritional services discussion concerning bid award 22-2227 bread and bread products. 3.4 child nutritional services discussion and action concerning bid award 22-2228 dry and frozen food products. 3.5 employee services discussion or action concerning 2022-2023 sal salary schedule. Pull 3.5. Okay. Three point six employee services discussion on action concerning a proposed plan of reorganization of staff and changes in job descriptions and related thereto. Pull three point six. Three point seven discussion and con uh, action concerning bids for WD and Mary Baker Smith Career Center HVAC shop renovations. 3.8 facility discussion or action concerning courts for Gallet Elementary flooring replacement. 3.9 discussion or action concerning Truman Elementary Learning Center guaranteed maximum price. 3.10 discussion or action concerning the lease of Section 16 property at 3301 Ambassador Caffrey Parkway and Ridge Road. 3.11 discussion or action concerning the sales tax collection report for April of 2022. 3.12 discussion or action concerning the grant summary fund program for May 2022. 3.13 discussion or action concerning budget to actual reports for the May 2022. 3.14 discussion and or action concerning the purchase of a site to accommodate the consolidation of the central and child nutrition warehouse. Pull that please. Pull 3.14. 3.15 discussion on action concerning the purchase of property located at 2831 South Fieldspan Road adjacent to Ridge Elementary. 3.16 construction dis discussion on action concerning the GMP guaranteed maximum price for the new Prairie Elementary School replacement project. 3.17 risk management discussion and or action concerning additional compensation for school bus owners, operators. Pool number 3.17. 3.18 risk uh, discussion or action concerning policy file JBA 
compulsory school attendance ages. 3.19, discussion or action concerning advertising and accepting proposals for emergency remediation services. 3.20, discussion and or action concerning resolution 6-22-2036, designation of official journal. 3.21, discussion or action concerning the minutes of May 11, 2022. Mr. President, I move that the board approve all items not pulled. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second that all items not pulled be approved. Before we, we vote on the motion, I would offer, uh, ask if we have any public comment on any of the items that were not pulled. If not, we'll call for the vote on the motion to approve the items not pulled. Motion carries. Um, we'll we'll move we'll move on then to item uh, three point one, discussion or action <coughs> concerning the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, Mr. President, I move that the board enter into executive session to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. Second. Second. Uh, we have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thank you. We'll be back in a few minutes. You saw me press it.
can't be there while she's there, I still feel comfortable, you know? your lifestyles book? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Christina gave that to me. She's got, she's got an article in there about her, one of her dogs. Who is that? Christina Dewey. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is nice. I like the cover. We're going to reconvene the meeting. Uh, I'd like to ask that everyone take your seats. Mr. President, I move that we return to regular session. All right. We have a motion. That we return to regular session. And we have a second by Mr. Latchley. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed nay. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I move that the board accepts the compiled superintendent's evaluation results. Second. Motion and a second. Would you repeat that again, please, Mr. Centennial? Well, now I got to look to make sure I got it right. Mr. President, I move that the board approves the compiled su superintendent evaluation results from the scoring tabulators. Oh. And it almost correct. And we have a second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion, ca motion carries. At this point, uh, it, 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 it indeed is a pleasure to announce to you, of course, it's public record, and we want to announce it, that the evaluations have been completed, each one of the Nine of us complete, completed an evaluation that, that the total possible points each one of us could have given us a, a total of four per item. And the overall composite score that our superintendent received was 3.67 out of four, which is a very, very positive evaluation. And I'm, I'm very happy to announce that. And without further ado, I would like to recognize her. I know she has a few comments to make. Mrs. Truska. Thank you, President Angel, and thank you, board members. Um, those that have worked with me know that I always say that the success of any leader depends on the folks um, of, uh, that he or she surrounds himself with. And, and I want to give credit where credit is due. I want to thank the board for the work that we've done through um, a pandemic and staying focused on kids and staff and on our, uh, you know, on schools overall. We experienced um, the fifth highest growth during the pandemic of districts statewide. 17 districts in the state um, experienced growth last year and, and we were one of those. And, and that is because of the work, again, of our board, our staff, teachers, um, community members. I see Mr. Uh, Todd Mouton here. Our community has wrapped its arms around our schools and, and, our, um, and, and our initiatives. So I certainly sit here and say thank you to everyone in this district, from teachers, custodians, district staff, senior level staff, board members, who make me look good this evening. Um, but that is truly the work of many people. So thank you for that. And I look forward to continuing our work as we stay focused on kids and their learning. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along, we'll move to item 3.5, which is employee services, discussion con action concerning the 2022-2023 salary schedule. Dr. Shasso, I think you uh, motion to pull that motion. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. All right. Second. Motion in the second to approve the salary schedule. Do we have any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Julia Reed, uh, President, Lafayette Parish Association of Educators. Um, we did have one uh, concern with the salary schedule being adopted for the 22-23 school year. Um, the previous salary schedule from the 21-22 uh, school year makes specific mention of how uh, years are calculated. The first 10 years were calculated at 
one for one, and after that it was uh, one year for every two years of service. That has been omitted from this new salary schedule, which is effective uh, July 2022 for the upcoming school year. And so our concern is, is that if the um, going forth experience is awarded one year for one year, that an employee coming into the school system would be awarded their full years of experience, whereas an existing employee would not have been given their full years of experience. They've been awarded the two years, I mean the one year for the two years. Essentially, uh, an employee could come in at a higher step on the salary schedule than an employee that is already uh, employed by the school system, situation that is you know, unfair to that employee. Um, we are public employees. And uh, one of the draw it has lots of benefits. One of the drawbacks is you can't negotiate your salary uh, when something like this happens. So unless that is addressed uh, through this, there's not something that employee could do about it. This could create bad feelings within departments amongst coworkers, which would you know, be a negative work environment. Um, we also, I know that we've been focusing a lot on recruiting, and certainly recruiting is important, but um, there is a large hole in education. Uh, before you can heal a wound, you have to stop bleeding. Um, and so we don't want to lose the people that we have. We, we'd like to hang on to them by being as, as fair as we possibly can. Um, and so what we're asking is that if it's going to be one year of experience for one year of experience, um, we'd like that to be retroactive for those current employees as well, not, not just asking for back pay, but just could they be moved to their correct year according to this policy. So if you had, you know, were 18 years, you came in, you got 14, could they be moved to the 18-year step just to make it fair and equitable going forth? Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members of the audience? Members of the board. Yes, sir, Dr. Chesso. I gave Bob Hammonds a call just to inquire about the exact same thing. I got a phone call from Shelly with LAE about two days ago, and she explained it to me what was, uh, what was the current situation. And then as well, uh, I got a phone call from a gentleman, I believe in the maintenance department uh, today, who expressed that um, he had came in with 20 years, and based upon old policy, he had received 10 years equivalent for the first 10 years, and then half. So my request to staff is, or my request to the board, at least, is to approve the um, the salary schedule as is, because it's it's at least correcting everything going forward, and then ask staff to at least take a look at how many people this currently affects and then i know we can't retro pay and we can't make it retroactive uh and i sure was hoping but i know i know if i call mr hammonds mr hammonds is going to tell me exactly what i don't want to hear sometimes but he always tells me the truth uh at least we could make it i think he said prospective or prospective yeah. prospective prospective um so at least we're correcting it going forward so if somebody comes in with 29 years or 30 years, at least we could go back and get them to the correct years of uh, experience. And then moving forward, they can be paid what they should have been paid from the get-go. So if staff could take a look at that, I asked if we had something possible that we could take a look at to see the exact number. And they weren't sure because there's nothing that we have that would say your previous years of experience we're gonna have to call in each one of these people one by one to see if that's, first of all, if that's even possible for us to do, but I'm hoping we can call them in one by one and correct situations of, I came in with 30 years and, um, and I got 10 years for the first 10 years and then I only got 10 years for the next 20 years. And I don't know, I, I, Matt, do you happen to remember, uh, somebody, somebody may mention that uh, you might remember exactly when it was. This is stuff I could ask Billy back in the day. I know Billy would. Uh, Doctor Chasson, that was uh, was was that was that within the last ten years that this occurred, or was this before I got on the board? We're not sure. I, I believe we were looking at some of the pictures in the hallway. We think it may more, be more like twelve to fourteen years. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. 
Yeah, I hope I would. I hope I at least would have been able to catch that and say, hold on, guys, that's that's not right. So just something for us to look at, and if we could correct that, I'd really appreciate it. And if we could get a, I guess, a report, or somebody could call us or email us, and then we could look at correcting it for the next board meeting. Thanks. You want to? Let, let me try to make make sense. You, you, there's no motion on the floor. We're not discussing the motion. That's correct. There is a motion on the floor. What is it? The motion is to approve. Okay. Yeah, the motion is to approve the current salary schedule, which corrects what previously occurred. So if you got hired five years ago, you only would get so many years of experience for a certain category. There's a ton of categories that, that get their full years of experience, teachers and various other positions, but there's a select group that only gets a certain amount. It's You're coming from non-public, non-private, non-exempt, private, private non-exempt. Yeah, if we, if we could just take a look at it. I'm sure someone from staff could explain it a little better than I am. Dr. Chasson, respectfully, we ask that um, we not bring it back next month. I mean, we certainly will bring it back as soon as we can, but there's no guarantee dependent upon if we're able to reach people and, and with the summer break right now. Um, and first of all, to identify the ones that we need to reach out to. Um, we'll do our best, but I, I know that it could quite possibly take longer than the next few weeks. Yes, ma'am, Ms. LeBou. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing it back until we have a process in place for uh, identifying everybody. Because um, I was at the retiree um, meeting today and there were so many individuals who had served in other parishes or in private capacity. So I really feel like we need to have a process that, um, because they're gonna have to self-report basically uh, is that correct? Uh, that's my understanding. So um, we really have to have a good process in place for how they're going to self-report, how we're going to evaluate it, how we're going to review it, because basically it's like a new hire. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying that we shouldn't look at it. I'm just saying that we shouldn't even, uh, we, we really need to understand all the facets of it before we bring it back to the board, because it sounds easy. Yeah, we'll just figure out who, who didn't get their years of service, but it sounds like it's very, it's going to be um, an arduous task with a lot of people um, because I think how, how many retirees were there today? Probably. I, I, I know as far as for the ones that were there, um, maybe a hundred or so. However, we announced the number of retirees in the last three years because we've not been, been able to hold that type of reception and that was close to four or five hundred. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and I guess if they return to work under the statute um, that the legislature just um, put forth, I guess we'd have to look at the fact of do we pay them now for their years of service that they never were paid for if they would return to work as a retire or hire, or do we just pay them for the years of service they actually had uh, that we actually credited them with? I, I think it's just there's a lot of um, facets that need to be discussed. So I would agree that I don't think we need to bring it back to the board unless we've until we've vetted the full process. Um, but again, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that there, there seems to be a lot of tentacles that we need to <laughs> tie up before we can even consider it. If there's no other questions or comments, then we'll vote on the motion. Seven, four, one against. Uh, motion carries. We'll move on then to item 3.6, discussion or action concerning a proposed plan of reorganization of staff and changes, job descriptions related thereto. And I will recognize Dr. Chasson again. You act that we pull it. Mr. President, I'll go, let me get to it. I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve. Let me see how it's worded. 
that the board approves the proposed plan of reorganization of staff is detailed in the public content section of this agenda item and the changes in job description related thereto as attached to become effective July 1st, 2022. I second. And we have a second, Ms. Mary. We, do we have any questions or public com comments from the audience? Anyone from the audience? Any questions or comments from anyone from the board? Yes, sir, Dr. Chasson. So my question is, there's some highlights in here amongst the job descriptions. And I was curious to know what pay grade increases are occurring for what select uh, positions. Now, I, now, granted, I understand that normally there was a grandstand from me before because I don't, I don't, I particularly don't agree with the way even previous boards or previous administrations went about pay grade increases. I understand what's taking place here. I understand that there is, we're eliminating one position and one position is absorbing almost an entire department. I, I, I get that. I understand it. I just want to know holistically what positions are we talking about? You want that? You want a list or what? Uh, I, 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 I don't think it's. I don't think it's that many. I just. I just want to know what positions we're talking about, and and then I can go from there. Because there are some yellow highlights, but apparently they're they're actually not pay grade increases. So I just want to be sure I'm, I'm reading it right. Good evening. Um, I'm the one who put the reorg package together, so I'm going to answer this question specifically. Whenever you pull up the. Um, attachments mm -hmm. the highlights to the pay grades is either based on that we changed the degreed administrative pay scale to just administrative pay scale or they got an increase but only the people who have a highlight specific to that pay grade um, so the one you're looking at now is not if you want me to list exactly who they are I can do that for you but if you're looking through the attachment it's just the ones who have a highlight on their pay grade okay so just those yes Okay. And it's either because they, they switched from degree to admin pay scale to admin pay admin scale pay. or they got an increase. You know what, just which ones got the increase? Yes, I do. Let me pull that up. So we have a reorg. Um, we are combining our print shop with our warehouse with our purchasing department. And amongst those positions, um, a few of those got an increase. So that's going to be in the business services okay. attachment. And if you look in there, we have two printer ones that are going to printer twos. Okay. And then we have, um, we're eliminating the current warehouse coordinator position and adding a warehouse and print shop coordinator. And then in the purchasing, which is going to be over the entire thing, we are eliminating um, the purchasing agent and adding a purchasing supervisor, purchasing and warehouse supervisor. So that's an increase. And then within the curriculum and instruction, we are creating a language acquisition department, and that's essentially going to combine our ESL and world language department. So there's a supervisor in there that's getting an increase for being over the two, or okay. combining the two, I should say. That is supervisor of language acquisition. And then there's, um, this is more of a reclass. There was some positions in the businesses department that are getting a reclass. They're not gonna be in the attachment, um, but they're on the agenda item as positions being eliminated and positions being added. Because those were reclasses. So they're not job description changes. They're eliminated and added. Say that for me one more time. So if you go back to the actual agenda item in the content area. Okay. And I don't have it up in front of me, so I'm looking at your screen. If you go up, hold on, Ms. Gordon's bringing it to me. Uh, yes, so if we go to bullet number three and four. Under, under, which, under which heading? The heading is going to be called the following positions will be eliminated and the following positions will be added. Okay. So in here, the account clerk, actually to start with the secretary, the secretary one is becoming a secretary two. Okay. So that's an increase. The account clerk one in payroll is going to become an account clerk two. The account clerk one in finance is going to become account clerk two. And then the account clerk two in budget and accounting is going to become a finance finance support specialist. And I believe okay. that's 
it for the increases. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yes, sir, Dr. Pegalo. Just, just a quick question. Uh, I'm seeing no impact financially. Mm -hmm. um, how many employees are, are going, positions are being eliminated through this reorganization? So there's one in the print shop that's being eliminated, and then there's, let's see. Do you want eliminated, eliminated, or eliminated and added? Because some are being eliminated and replaced with newer positions. Well, I just want eliminated. Okay. So there's one in the print shop that's being eliminated. Um, and we've created a printer three in there. So that is a, a decrease in the salary. It's not an increase. Um, the other ones are pretty equivalent. Yes. And then category one says the positions that are being eliminated altogether. And then category two are the positions that are being added. Any, any other questions or comments from any members of the board? Uh, before we vote, I would like to I would like to take a minute just to thank the superintendent for um, improving on efficiency, trying to get more work done with as many or f or, or fewer people, if, if uh, and giving additional work to some. Uh, I I think one of the most important things we do is is choose the superintendent, and after that, I think we expect you to do your due diligence, and I think you've done just that. And I want to thank you for for your your hard work and your your efforts to try to streamline our our, our workforce and make us work more efficiently. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Yes, sir, Mr. Latchley. And off of that, the very last line: there will be no impact on the general fund budget. So this was done within the budget. I want the public to know: no money is being added, no money is being pulled from anywhere. It stayed within, and. Uh, Thank you. If not, we'll call. That ends the discussion. We'll call for the vote, uh, Ms. Secret Madam Secretary. Seven for one against. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I want to thank thank the ladies up there for kind of speeding up the voting process. It uh, it helps things move along. I appreciate that, ladies, very much. Okay, we'll move along to item three point one four: discussion or action concerning the purchase of a site to accommodate the consolidation of the central and child nutritional warehouses. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> that the board authorizes the superintendent board president to enter into negotiation for the purchase of a site to consolidate the central and child nutrition warehouses subject to final approval by the board. Second. We have a motion and a second by Mary. Uh, any public comment or question from members of the audience? Any com comments from members of the board? Yes, sir, Mr. Centeni. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to just make a, a small point, and then I'm going to vote no on this because I do have a philosophical disagreement that we should be uh, purchasing so much land in such valuable corridors as we have been in recent years, starting with the Camping World, uh, which is now the bus facility, this both frontage road on what will be future I-49, um, and then we have a couple of different schools that are going to be on very valuable pieces of land. So I just have a philosophical disagreement that uh, since we don't pay property taxes, that we should probably try to avoid taking um, high property tax generating properties out of commerce. That's it. Thank you. Any other qu comments or questions from members of the board? Yes, ma'am, Ms. LeBou. Spoken like a true. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, my question is the build out because obviously if we're renting out or, or purchasing a portion of the building um, 
I just, I would like to see, and we can do this before that. I would just like to see some information on how that that segregation is being completed because there seems to be a red line around this this uh, plan site plan going straight through a building and I just didn't I, I, in my hand I I, I just want to see how this is contemplated to work and that will be presented that's that's part of our due diligence process before we started spinning our wheels on, and getting this done um, and looking at the feasibility of it um, we will re research all that and bring that back to you in the final negotiation Thank you. And can you say what the other half of the building would be used for? Would it be in commerce or would it be yes. taken out of commerce? The, the building's currently in commerce. Um, however, the deed is heavily restricted. The, you know, uh, the entity that sold the site to the current owner had some heavy re deed restrictions to avoid the competition of the business they were in. So um, the, the company that bought it only needs about half of it so that's why they're putting the other half for sale so they will be in the other half and they will still be in full production right now there's just a whole bunch of empty space they don't need to heat and cool um, and they have agreed to build the wall and to separate the utilities as part of the price so far dr chasso so we wouldn't be purchasing the entire building No, only half the buildings for sale currently. They would they segregate the building into two. They're not really interested in uh, selling the whole whole site. Um, the current square footage that they're looking to sell is is um, probably a little bit more than we need, but it would certainly allow us to expand in the future. Um, the whole thing would probably be a bit much for us, um, and we wouldn't want to necessarily get into the business of renting real estate. So half actually kind of works for us at this okay. point. So the, the, the current owner of the entire site, the eight acres, the entire building, is that Etsy? Is that the actual people that's in there? They actually own it? We're in a negotiation, so I, I really don't want to um, comment um, at this what, point. What, mm -hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> it was in the newspaper that someone's in there, and it was Etsy, so it's public knowledge. So my question is, mm -hmm. Is the current owner of the building the entity that's in there now, or is it some other entity? It's the current owner is in the building. As the current as owner, as, of, as of, I understand it, yes. Of the building, okay. But they're not utilizing the whole building. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I'm asking the questions, I don't think anything's wrong with it. I understand. No, I understand what we're doing. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of. So when we're so when and if we're ready to sell this then will there be restrictions based upon the heavy deeds in there or the will deeds? this all will this all come to us so we know exactly what we're allowed to do like are we purchasing the land so now we can do with what we want with the land the land is permanently restricted so whoever owns it could never open a business similar to the business that was in there before okay mm -hmm. so that's permanent from what i understand so um, that kind of really limits what can go there in the in terms of commerce. Okay, would we own the land or would they own the land? We would own the land. The we land. would own the land under our part. So it'd be like kind of like a shopping center, basically, when you have a, two stores in one shopping center. Okay, you would kind of like what they did right. with Home Depot at the Northgate Mall. Correct. They kind of same same kind same of situation. situation. Okay, I got you. Will you whenever you come to us with this? Will we get all of the deeds and all of the restrictions? So we'll know. Yes. Every, okay. Well, Thanks. we'll disclose everything um, to y'all before. This is we're just kind of initially looking at this and um, wanted to get the go ahead, and we'll bring everything back to you. Do we have? Yes, sir, Mr. Broussard. Mr. Mr. Dugard, I, I take it that we're going to combine what we have here with the one on Evans. Do we have any plans for our warehouse on Evans? Are we going to keep it as is or utilize it or sell it? Do we have any immediate plans for it? Um, our, our plan would to be to sell it and to use those proceeds to help buy and renovate this particular site. We actually have two entities that already expressed an interest in it. Um, we've already had one that's toured it twice. <laughs> so that will go into commerce, back into commerce. 
and they will pay property taxes once we sell that site to some to a private entity unless it's purchased by a government which I currently I don't think that's um, the situation if are there any other questions or comments from members of the board if not madam secretary will call for the vote Seven four one against. Thank you very much, Ms. Blanco. I just want to make make a point that uh, motions that were made, or I'm sorry, motions that were seconded by I, I called out Mary. Just let the record show I met Mrs. Morrison. <laughs> I have a hard time distinguishing from Morrison, Mary. official, and Mary and Purvis and her husband and I. <laughs> It's, he calls me by my first name because I'm his favorite board member. That's why. It, it was also it was also tougher when we had a Morris on the board as well. Yeah, Don Morris. Yeah. I did that one time. It was like funny. <laughs> Thank you. We'll move on to item 3.17, uh, risk management discussion or action concerning additional compensation for school bus owners operators. Mr. Elroy, Mr. Bruce Roy, you ask. Mr. President, I'll, yes, I'll, move, I, I, I'll move that the board approves additional compensation to be paid to school bus owner operators for the 2022-2023 school year in the amount of $5,000 total for those entering agreements for a term of one year effective July 2022 and up to $4,587 prorated for those entering agreements for a term of less than one year after the start of the school year provided the school bus owner operator executes a school bus use agreement prepared by the board's legal counsel. And second by Mr. Latchley. Okay, <laughs> Britt. <laughs> any qu any comments from members of the audience? Any comments or questions from members of the board? Mr. Owens. Yes, ma'am. Go go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I uh I, I would need to explain I pulled that for the sole purpose of abstaining from voting for it. Uh, not that I disagree with it, but I need to abstain from voting for it. I understand. You've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Booth? I just have one question. Um, I know that we created a, a school bus uh, committee or advisory council this year, and I just was curious if this was vetted by them or is this being proposed without them ever having it? Can somebody answer that question? So the bus advisory panel, this is not something that they've brought up for for discussion they have those opportunities to bring anything that they wish for us to discuss it has not come up okay Mr. So Lachely, I'm sorry uh, uh, this, was, this was brought up by the bus drivers years ago they brought this to us and we approved it and this comes back to us every, every year. year and that was gonna be my next question I don't remember this from last year so that was uh, my yes, question we, we, we do it every year uh, and then um, the five thousand dollars that is that the same amount that we've done year over year correct in light of inflation, do we feel like that number should still be the number that we're, we're using, at considering, I know gas is, is a separate um, compensation, but. Um, this is for insurance. This mm -hmm. is for insurance that we did to help them, to help the contract drivers. And have we evaluated whether their insurance has changed since they designated this number as the number? I'm, ju I'm just curious. I just didn't know if this number has been vetted versus you know, if we've used this number year over year, I just did, uh, circumstances may have changed year over year, and I just, um, I, you know, I will vote to approve it, but I, I would ask, I will bring it back up if, if we evaluate and determine that um, insurance is substantially higher than it was when the board originally voted this uh, value, um, just to ensure that we're keeping up with the percentage that and the intention that was done when we originally approved this. Thank you. Yes, sir, Dr. Chasso. I could probably answer that a little, just a little bit. Um, whenever this first occurred, they actually, they were able to create a spreadsheet where each and every individual board member was listed, excuse me, bus driver was listed. 
um, what that individual person's actual payment was, and then you could actually see a plus and minus that some were actually uh, getting more. But look, let me let me let me. I want to make sure I say this right. If it didn't reach the five thousand, they didn't get the full five thousand. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, yeah. So that's why it's prorated. So if your insurance end up costing you four thousand, you would get the four thousand. So some were under, some were actually um, over. But there's a spreadsheet, so I guess whenever they could easily, not easily, but it could be recreated at that point for this upcoming, so you could get that information real easy. Yeah. yeah. No other questions or comments. We'll call for the vote. Seven four one abstain. That was the last item of our of our agenda. Before our, we adjourn, however, I will recognize Dr. Shuster. Thank Dr. you, Mr. Angel. Really quickly, guys, before everyone d disappears, uh, I don't know if I'm going through a midlife crisis or not, but um, similar to what occurred uh, with me speaking about Mr. Broussard, I left out the last meeting, and me and Ms. Blanco got to talking. And Ms. Blanco enlightened me on something that occurs every single day here at the school board office. And I thought it was the most amazing thing that I just wanted to share it. I made sure to get everyone's permission to share it. Uh, Ms. Arlene, who works as an accountant clerk, uh, Ms. Arlene gets around on a motorized wheelchair. And unbeknownst to me, but I guess people here know that. Ms. Charles Claire knows. Amanda knows. She shared it with me. Um, our custodians here, Ms. Mona, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Gum. Um, Mr. Ryan and Mr. Gum in the mornings, um, they, they, she leaves her motorized wheelchair here and they take her motorized wheelchair out to her parking spot and they have it waiting for her when she shows up to work. They take her belongings, they take uh, her coffee, and and then Miss Arlene ma makes her way in the work. Um, in the afternoon, um, Mr. Kevin follows her out to her car, and when she gets into her car, Mr. Kevin takes her wheelchair, rides it back inside, plugs it up so it's fully charged, and they repeat the process: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday without anybody knowing anything of the sort. And I didn't cry three, four times thinking about it because those are the nicest folks that I know of. They don't, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Gum, Ms. Moen, Ms. Ryan, they don't bother anybody. They work hard, they bust their butts every single day for us. And they do something without anybody needing to know anything about it. And I just wanted to I don't know. I don't. Something must be going wrong with me, cause, <laughs> cause I'll start riding down the road, and, and it could be a country song, and tears start coming down. I don't know what's going on with me, but I just want folks to know that there are some amazing people in this world. There are some amazing people in the school system, <laughs> and I wanted to acknowledge those people, Miss Mona, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Gum, and they do it without anybody knowing any any different. And I was like, man, that's just amazing. I just wanted to say something. So. With that, thank you all. I appreciate it. I'll be looking forward to finding something else amazing to share at the end of the next board meeting. Thank you very much, Dr. Chasson. With that, I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned. Great job, Tommy.